Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about texture and I'm going to use a couple of sketchbook pages as examples of how I did them and most importantly the thinking behind how I did them. My name is Xavier Pick and welcome to another journey in a sketchbook. Texture, the word itself, comes from the Latin textura to do with weaving textiles. It adds interest to the rich tapestry of life in our work. There's another word in the ancient Greek, horor vacui, which means nature abhors a vacuum. And we do have this need to fill those empty spaces in our work. It's very different than modernism, which is cold and simple and minimal, and there's lots of use of space. We want to fill spaces with details to make our work a lot more interesting. A little question came to my mind. Why does texture add visual interest to art and design work? Went back in time to our own development in the womb. The first sense we develop is the sense of touch. This happens a lot earlier than the other senses, such as our sense of balance, the sense of taste and smell, or the visual sense. Very obvious factor to distinguish between something that's safe or dangerous, whether it's soft, hard and sharp, whether it's cold or very hot. And one of the most important aspects of our physiological development is the importance of bonding with our parents, particularly our mothers. And to hold, to touch, builds that connection, builds that relationship with the person that looks after us. So there's something deep within us to have that tactile connection. And when we look at a piece of work that has a tactile quality, all of those deep-rooted aspects of our physiology are remembered. There's another really good analogy with the concept of uh, alchemy. It ties in with texture in terms of the substance, the materiality of matter. Okay, you know, what is the quality of a substance rather than the chemical formula? So you take an idea like the diamond. Okay, so diamond, the hardest material known to man currently. We all know that it's made from carbon atoms. But the same carbon atoms can make other things as well, such as charcoal, which has a very different substance, very, very different. It's very soft. It's one of the softest materials known to man. But in terms of the substance, charcoal is very similar to chalk, but it's a completely different chemical. Ancient alchemists would look at the substance of matter because they didn't understand the chemistry and they would transform these substances into other things as we all know you know looking for the philosopher's stone or turning lead to gold isaac newton was an alchemist as well as uh, a scientist he was at that crossover between mystical magical uh, understanding of um, what makes up the universe you know is the birth of modern society science Going back to you know, why that's related to texture, there's a great book by James Elkins called What Painting Is, and he talks through the book about alchemy, about that transformation, about understanding the substance, not the chemistry so much, but the substance, and having that sense of transformation, knowing the materiality, you know, what things feel like, what the quality of that texture is to turn work into magic. It's super important to gather primary research. So often we see downloaded textural elements that people have just grabbed off the internet. For me, it's so important to go out into the environment and look and collect. They're just flat, symbolic representations of the life of Buddha on one level, and then we have the teachings of Buddha on another level absolutely stunning and beautiful colors they've got blues and grays and ochres and sepia eroded by time eroded by the elements 
It's really beautiful, it really is. There's other things you can do, such as you know, physically grabbing that texture um, in your sketchbook, in your notebook. This was a few years ago, I was at the Ziggurat of Ur in southern Iraq, and I didn't have much time. Um, it was a war zone, there's a military escort there, it was a dangerous place, so I was just taking some graphite rubbings of these ancient cuneiform Sumerian carvings added actuality to my sketchbook pages. You know, we have a textual relationship with food as well. It's one of the ways that we appreciate food, other than, you know, the taste, the texture is so important. And in you know, this example here, I'm just experimenting with, with some custard apple and um, some durian, inoki mushrooms. You know, just being a little bit more imaginative with the textual qualities of the surface and seeing what else we can do, just playing with a scanner. You know, such an immediate thing, a scanner, for, for getting the surface quality of something. Just moving this Dorian around, it can create a whole universe. It's almost an alien landscape. It's an imagined artificial texture. It doesn't really exist. And I was playing with this Anoki mushroom and you know, it created an underwater world. And I took my family into this stream up in the hills and you know, just looking at the little interesting rock formations and the pebbles and the gold flecked rock and and it you know I looked at this rock and it, it had its own quality and and I tried to kind of emulate that in the sketchbook page here you know, just playing with some gold leaf and adding a little bit of sand to the paper and layering and adding different materials combining again you know it's, it's like alchemy but trying to create that textual surface that was found in nature. It's very similar to it. It's actually trying to emulate what you actually see physically on the page. It's another good word there, very similar to it. There's a ruined house just opposite where I live, and um, now it's a bit colder, the snakes are hibernating, so I went in just to look for some reference material for this demonstration. And really gorgeous place, you know, there's a lot of history. And that's the other thing about texture is that it can have meaning as well. It can be about time passing, decay and, you know, the fragility of um, our existence are illustrated in, in the way things decompose. Um, so I just looked around, you know, just grabbed some more reference that I could then use and play with. Um, to demonstrate some materials and techniques in this in this presentation. Just put down some paint on the on the sketchbook page here just to get rid of that white piece of paper and then I've scratched into it, just create a little bit more of a surface. The good thing about this technique is you can work out composition quite quickly and you've got a super surface to work on top of. I've got some inkjet prints here of some blue lichen on a branch and I'm just kind of placing them on the page after the paint's dry. I fix these prints just so that um, it doesn't, they don't come off. And I'm using some matte medium here on the printed side, which is going to adhere to the surface. So I'll just place that down and then just rub it down solidly and let it dry for a while. Once it's dry, I'll use just some simple water, just spray on the back of it, just so that I can remove the paper, the backing paper on the print. So in a bit of time, I'll just rub away some of that paper and you can kind of see that print is just left behind. But the beauty is it's also showing the painterly marks underneath. So it's a very quick way of creating that sort of ghostly image of those textural elements that an interest to a sketchbook page. And this is a great surface. I could draw on top of this. I could write on top of this. And I can build up that page and it's still left sort of relatively flat. I'm loving the physicality of working on this page. And this leads to an important conclusion for this film about texture. And I'm gonna go back even further in time to our own development as a species, the Homo sapiens species. About 70,000 years ago, we started developing abstract thought and communication.
communicating abstract ideas. And the cognitive revolution transformed us as a species. We became the dominant species very quickly, and we see the results of that today. Uh, we've got nearly 8 billion people on planet Earth. We are overrunning this planet because of this simple idea that we can communicate abstract thoughts and so much of our existence is based on abstract things, things that aren't tangible, things you cannot touch. Bank accounts, chemical formulas, countries, many, many aspects of today's life, corporations, stocks and shares, they're all ideas. They don't actually exist as such physically. And as a result, we have great need for things that are real, are tangible, that we can touch. And how this relates to texture is that deep down in our primitive brain, we have a desire for that which is real, that which is tangible, that which we can touch. Because so much of our life is tied up with the abstract, the imagined, 